Northern civilians and soldiers rose in a vicious ethnic pogrom. Thousands of Igbos lost their lives. Hundreds of thousands more fled home to the east. When the federal government proved incapable of halting the pogroms, Ojuku, then a colonel and military governor of eastern Nigeria, grasped the opportunity. Showing from the first a gift for propaganda, Ojuku mobilized the Igbos for secession from the north. Ojuku's public relations were very good. The propaganda necessarily appeals to the senses and sensibilities of people. And so to the domestic constituency, Ojuku targeted the information that if they did not go along with Biafra, the Northerners were going to advance and carry on the jihad and kill everybody off in eastern Nigeria and dip the Koran in the sea. That was the euphemism used. Laws and pains. It was the first major test for Nigeria's government in the post colonial era, and the mode of engagement was the infamous Operation Wet TA, which translated to Operation Wet It. People talk about the infamous Operation Wet TA in the days of Wild Wild West today. What does it mean? In fact, because of Operation Wet TA, some people began to label the people of the Western region as being violent. They said that the West started the culture of violence. Well, some people from the West say the violence didn't just arise. It arose after the democratic system had failed. According to some of the Yoruba men who witnessed it, they said they were pushed to the wall. And how did that democratic option fail? The beginning of the crisis was that Chief Ladoke Akintola, who was then deputy to the premier of the old western region, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, wanted the action group to have an alliance with the Northern People's Congress. Awolowo and others objected and asked, on what basis would the alliance be based? What is the connection between us that will make us come together? What is the program of the NPC that is akin to our own and can work together? So it was an ideological disagreement. But Akintola and others were more inclined with the idea that the NPC people were in the majority. So let us join them to form the government. Shivawolo felt that you would form a government with a party with a program for the people. The question was, is the NPC going to implement free education, free health services, integrated rural development and so on? These were the programs with which the AG, that's Action Group, had been known. So if you are going to form a government with a party, it has to be with a party with similar programs, even if not all the programs, at least one or two. Those were the arguments. But at the time, there was schism within the AG and there was prejudice against Yoruba people from Ijebu area who had been pitted against the people of Yoruba land from the upper north, like Oyo and others. It was their view that Awolo was becoming too powerful. And more so, that was the time Awolo had resigned from his position as the premier of the western region. And Akintola had become the premier. Awolo has chosen to go to the center, federal government. The crisis went on. Then there was crisis in the House of Assembly, which was a spillover of the rift in the party. Akintola was then the premier. The member of the house who were supporters of Awolo said to Akintola that, well, you can't hold this view and still be our premier. Then they moved a motion for a vote of no confidence in the premier to substitute him with Alhaji Dauda Adebuenro. 
Meanwhile, Akintona had the backing of the federal government, led by Arhaji Tafawa Belawa. Knowing that the motion might pass, they brought armed security men to the House of Assembly. When Afeni Fere, a pan Yoruba group, and the progressives are now agitating for regionalization of the police, people do not know what gave back to it. It was since that time that the governor or the premier of a region was head of security by name. It was the federal government that was controlling the police force. So the police invaded the parliament on the day that the motion was to be moved. A man from Obomosho that was in support of Akintola jumped on the table and shouted, Fire on the mountain! The moment the motion for a vote of no confidence in Akintola was moved. The federal government had brought security people to surround the parliament. Then the police rushed in the parliament and tear gassed the whole people. So now, how did the operation Wetie actually play out in the Wild Wild West period? People were born in the houses of all those who were opposed to Awolowo. They were dealing with all the supporters of Akintola. The people made governance impossible for the government. We had Akintola traveled in ambulances and so on for protection. But how were the rioters able to overwhelm the might of the police force? The police tried to suppress the action, but when people revolt, what can you do? The revolt was massive against the government. Now, how long did the crisis last? It went on till the coup of 1966. Listen again, it went on till the coup of 1966. So, the violence led to the coup. Remember, in the interview of these coup lotters, they said, we want to install Awolowo. Because at a point in time, they said Awolowo was behind the violence. He championed the violence. He was arrested for terrorism and locked up. So the coup lotters in one of the interviews said, we did the coup to install Awolowo as the president of the country, though the coup failed. So it went on till the coup of 1966. When they rigged the election of the 1964 and returned Akintola, so it was the rigging that led to the Operation Wetie, which led to the coup. Listen carefully. The intention of the coup was not to install an Igbo president. No, the coup lotters were sympathetic to Awolowo, who was then detained, arrested and detained, or arrested and imprisoned. To them, they felt injustice was done to Awolowo. Aside that, they also felt the politicians at that time were corrupt. And take a look at those who were killed. Study those who were killed. In one way or the other, they were involved in the wide, wide west thing at the later stages. Who taught Akintola to shoot? Remember, before his death, he opened fire at those soldiers who killed him. Who taught him to shoot? Lagema. That officer was among those killed by Nzogo and the coast. Whose government arrested Awolowo? Tafawa Belawa's government arrested Awolowo. So you can begin to understand the intention of the coast. It is never to install an Igbo president. But look at all this and that happened and led to the civil war. We just gave you a brief history of several things that happened in Southwest that brought about the 1966 coup and
Thank you.